Hello and welcome to an overview of how you can use vCenter Operations Management Suite to discover applications and map and group their dependencies to get better visibility into the application services running in your virtual environment and supporting infrastructure as well as their interrelationships. vCenter Infrastructure Navigator, or VIN, is a key component of the vCenter Operations Management Suite. It allows you to automatically discover the services and the application dependencies within your virtual environment. With VIN, you also have the ability to take those application dependencies and make custom application groups based on specific services or other organizational methods in your virtual environment. These application groups are referenced by vCenter Operations Manager, where they are used to provide better application context for performance, capacity, and troubleshooting purposes. As we see here, vCenter Infrastructure Navigator is running in the vCenter Web Client. Now, let's go ahead and click on the host clusters and look at the VIN user interface. Here we see the summary page for VIN displaying information about our vCenter server. Let's focus on the Navigator widget here on the right side, which highlights all of the known application services that VIN has discovered and all the dependencies between them. To get a better understanding of how this works, let's open up a few of these categories. For example, as we can see here, there are a number of web servers in our environment. In fact, we have 32 of them. Then we'll categorize the number of discovered web servers that are available. We can see that we have 13 Apache web servers, a number of IIS web servers, and one Nginx server. As we look at the mail server, we can see here that we have four different exchange servers, as well as a number of other servers. And as we look at the database category, again, we'll see a number of different database servers. MySQL, Microsoft SQL, Oracle, etc., all in the list. So again, our list includes everything running in our virtual environment that is associated with this vCenter. If we need to, we can also drill down into specific components. For instance, we can look at a specific host. For this specific host, we can see which VM is on this host. Often, as a virtual infrastructure administrator, you may need to have visibility around application services from a data store perspective as well. To do that, we can simply go and select a specific data store in the left-hand frame. And as we select that data store, we'll have visibility into the associated application service. So if we select, for example, AP LUN3 and highlight that, the summary tab on the right will populate with information about that data store. And as before, we have this navigator portlet, which will show us all the associated application services that are associated with this data store. Another possible scenario would be to take a look at our different networks and see what application services are associated with each of them. In many organizations, there may be a number of different networks. So similarly to the data store view, if, for example, we'd like to see the application services associated with our VLAN 1042, we can simply select that and our navigator widget will display all the known application services, where we can expand the categories if necessary to get additional details around them. Let's go back to the vCenter server level, where we can now see the Navigator portlet, which is highlighting the entire list of known application services. And if we click on the link Show All in Inventory, we'll be able to view a list of all the virtual machines that are associated with the application services that have been discovered. Now, the great thing about this view is that we have the ability to search and filter on any type of application service that we would like. So, for example, if we need to see how many IIS servers that we have in our environment, we can simply type IIS, and it will highlight and filter the number of virtual machines that have IIS installed. If we need to look at how many Exchange servers we have in our environment, we simply type Exchange, and again, it will provide a filtered list of all the virtual machines running Exchange services. For our example here, let's take a look at Oracle and view the number of virtual machines associated with Oracle. Now, to go into a little more detail, let's select this top one here, the APV Cloud Database Virtual Machine. As we double-click on the virtual machine, it will take us to the summary page for that virtual machine. This is where we can see the number of dependencies. Notice the difference here when we are looking at the dependencies at the VM level. Here, we will also see the breakdown between the number of incoming and outgoing dependencies as well. Now, as we select Show Dependencies, then we'll bring up the dependencies for this virtual machine in a map view, showing the incoming and outgoing dependencies for this virtual machine. One of the things that you'll notice here is that whenever we have a virtual machine selected on the map, at the bottom of the screen, we're going to get additional detailed information around that resource as well. 
We also have the ability to select services, which will highlight the known application services associated with this VM. We can also choose to show the unknown services that have not been defined by then out of the box, or these could be our organization's custom set of applications. It is important to note here that as you begin the discovery process, you will have unknown services. But a great feature of vCenter Infrastructure Navigator is that you can define that service just one time, and then VIN will automatically discover that service for the entire vCenter environment. So let's look more closely at an example. Here we have an unknown service. It's the SSHD daemon, and it's on port 22. So let's select here and add. So we're looking at the process of SSHD and at port 22. And we're just going to call this SSH. Now we can select a category. For this example, we'll just call it Other. And we'll select OK. Now, we have a custom fingerprint definition that we just created for this service. Again, this is now available for the entire vCenter environment. And as we can now see, it's been discovered on this virtual machine, as well as the top virtual machine where before it was undefined on both of them. So now as we look at the map a little more closely, you'll notice that the virtual machines typically will have an incoming arrow and an outgoing arrow with a number indicated. That simply denotes the number of incoming and outgoing dependencies. So to the left side here, we have one incoming dependency, and to look at that more closely, we can simply click on that to expand it in the map. Similarly, we can look at the outgoing dependencies and expand that as well and the expanded dependencies will now show in green. Another thing we can do in this view is to mouse over a specific dependency connection to display the port. In this example here, we can see port 443 on this dependency. Let's look at these two gray machines that are located on our map. These grayed out boxes are either physical machines, because we will do one-hop dependencies to physical boxes, or virtual machines that are running in another vCenter. Now that we've expanded the map, we can see that there are some components here that make up an application that let's say we're now interested in creating an application group for. So using control click, we first select all three of these VMs that will make up our application, and then we will select create an application from the top navigation. And then we'll select a name to refer to our application. We'll just call this one Ben Cloud App and say OK. The map is now being displayed for all the first-level dependencies of our application. For the next step, we can actually use the drop-down selector, and it will show us all of the applications that this Oracle DB is associated with. And then, here is our Ben Cloud app. And if we click on the Ben Cloud app, we're going to clear everything else off the screen, and it will only display the three components that make up this particular application. Now, let's look a little more closely at some of the other application dependency management tasks that VIN can help us with. There are some situations where you might need to rename an application. Here, VIN gives us the option to rename a specific application that we have previously defined. Another time-saving feature is the ability to easily add a dependent VM to an application definition. We can simply expand the dependency and select the machine, in this case, this physical server, that we'd like to add to our application. Once it's been selected, we can simply say Add Selected Application Member, and that machine will be added to our map. Now, it is part of our default Ben Cloud application. Also, just as we can add a VM, we can simply remove a virtual machine as well from our application. Then also includes a number of other features that allow us to better visualize our virtual environment. So if the map gets too dense or is showing us too many features at once, we do have a magnifying glass feature that allows us to zoom in to just a certain number of components and then hover over them so we can get a better view in case it's just a little hard to read or see what that component exactly is. We also have the ability to fit content into the viewable area, or we can change the size with the plus and minus sign zooming in and out of the map. And for reference, we can always export this map out as an image. Let's go back to the first level of dependencies. Sometimes these maps can get very complicated, and one of the things that VIN allows us to do is to view the map information in table form. So now we're viewing the exact same information as our complicated map, but in a top-down table format where we can easily still see all of the dependencies. Where this is the center object, if you will, and here are the outgoing dependencies that come from that selected object. 
So to this point, we've seen how Venn can help build out an application manually using dependencies. Now let's look at how Venn can automatically build an application for us using the services that we've just covered. To do that, let's go to the Infrastructure homepage and then to the Manage tab. We see here a list of automatic application definitions. For our example, let's go ahead and add a new definition for a featured app that we want to discover. To do that, we can simply select the plus sign, and from here, we're going to create a new three-tiered app. First, let's provide the name of the application, and then we'll provide the service categories that we want to add. The first service category that we'll want to provide is a web server. That will automatically bring up a drop-down list, and in this case, we're going to select Apache. We'll want to add two other service categories. So we'll want to add an application server. In our case, we'll want to add a TC server. And lastly, let's add a database server, which will be Postgres. So here we have the service categories defined. We can simply finish the creation of this application called Ben 3 tier And now we'll notice that it exists already in our list. And refreshing this one more time will show the discovery of the application. It doesn't take very long. After the discovery has completed, we can see the one instance of our Ben three-tiered app. Now, at this point, let's go back home to the vCenter level and we'll look at the Summary tab. Here we can select Show All in Inventory, and now we can view the two applications that we created in Ven. If we type in the word Ben, we'll see our Ben Cloud app and our Ben 3 tier app, which have been automatically discovered for us. Now, what's great about these applications is since there are applications built in Ven, they are automatically brought over to vCenter Operations Manager. And as we tab over into vCOps, we can see that these applications have automatically been brought over. And if we look at the New Groups tab, we can open up our applications. All these applications were automatically discovered by vCenter Infrastructure Navigator and brought over into vCOps, so now we can manage our infrastructure in the context of our applications. Here, if we hover over the new custom group, we'll see this is the Ben Cloud app that we automatically discovered and brought over, and here are the three VMs that make up that application. So to recap, we've seen how vCenter Infrastructure Navigator can automatically discover application services and help you better visualize relationships and map dependencies of applications on virtualized compute, storage, and network resources. For more information about the vCenter Operations Management Suite, please visit VMware.com. Thank you.